Hi guys. Two of the scriptures that are got in prayer. Matthew 6, 18 through 22. And then Hebrews 6, 2 through 6. Hebrews 2 through 6. Two, Hebrews 6, 2 through 6 was first. But as I was in prayer, the Lord said, spoke was speaking to me. And he spoke to me in these scriptures, and he said, this is where my people err the most. So I started reading it, and then the next day, it was Matthew 6, 18 through 24. And it just kind of all started coming together, and I was wanting to do this message, but I just couldn't get to it. Time-wise, part of my message, or being stolen from, deceived in our time by the enemy. But that'll come in this, in, in this message. But the first part in Hebrews, and there's more to it, quite a bit more to it. But one of the main things that I took out of it was the part about the repentance. I've done it. We all have done it. You know, we play the blame game. We do all this kind of stuff. It's like we keep coming. It's like, man, we keep coming back. It's like, where's your faith? To really repent. I know what happened when I really truly repented when I was 18 and all throughout my life. But I really know what happened. I really truly repented and came to God. But it's like the prayer line, guys, when we're, you know, if we're plagued with some kind of lifelong disease, it, you know, it gets old going back up into the same prayer line for the same thing. We keep kind of repeating and repeating and repeating the same, kind of an expecting different results or thinking, th who knows? But it's becoming this, it's, it has become deceptive to us guys and the enemy uses it because he knows our weaknesses. But it's hard to come to the full realization of the gospel if we keep going back. Because we keep crucifying him the same. Jesus is saying that's what it says in, in the scriptures. Read it. It's in 6.6. 6, Hebrews 6.6. 6. We can't, that's the error that we're doing, guys. We keep coming back to the cross for the same thing. Over and over and over and over again. It's time that we just do it fervently once. Not move on, but to take the next step with the Lord. Because he, because we kind of get stuck in that mud. Guys, I've done it. That was one of my messages. I was, I want to say it about time because the enemy plagued me with time loss. And I was about my father's business 99.5%. That little deviation, that 5%, got to me. And I didn't think it was. And it wiped me out mentally, physically, all kinds of ways. I hurt some people that I was trying to help. And I said I hurt them. And I kept, you know, I'd fix this, I'd fix that. And it just, it became a nightmare, a time warp. Because I erred just enough. One day I will share the message of what the error was, but deviate just enough. That's in my messages, guys. Watch it. What's your heading? It's for me just as much as for anybody else. I didn't think that that little itty bitty, not seeming non consequential things or thing was going to have that much effect. 
wasn't even really paying attention to it, guys. I, I just, it, it didn't start out that way. It was never, my heart was pure. My intentions and my motives and my actions just kind of kept getting farther and farther away from it and into it. And I didn't realize it till, till it was too late. Some of it. So then I completely step back, reevaluate, cut cut some people loose, and just do some of this myself. And I was like, man, you're killing yourself. The pruning hurts. But no, it's because I need to be um, I need to get all of God with this one because of everything that's transpired, and I really need to get to the bottom of this. Not the top, the bottom. Why? You know, it was a combination of things, but a lot of it was being the pain in the flesh, and I didn't realize it, that 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 it was still there, and I just, man, it just became a. Because, but I kept doing the same thing, and that's the message, guys. We're doing the same thing, and it's becoming distractive to our walk with God. And then the second one in Matthew 6, the very end of it, 22, talks about that you can't serve two masters. You'll either love one and hate the other or vice versa. And you can't serve God and man when you're talking about money. But that's what this is about, guys. We've deviated from the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified for our eternal salvation. We keep coming back. I was watching a friend of mine. He's got a good heart, but he's drifted. Because now it's all, he was preaching on the stage, and the stage was 20 feet in the air, seemed like it lights everywhere. This big, huge, Goliath monumental thing. For what? And the minister next to him, I guess was a minister, on his phone taking pictures, you know, because it's all about crowds and numbers and and what the world is doing and the, and the church has been doing too. It's all about the power, the numbers, the money, the status. All these things that are not of God. I'm not naive, guys. I just had to go get gas in my car. I'm not naive. I have to have a car to get somewhere. I'm not naive. You have to get in a, have a plane fare to, to fly places. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we've idolized it and it's become our God and we want to go back and repent. And, uh, it's time to just kind of cut all the bull. Really, all of us. That's why I stepped back from what I was doing. I'm still doing it to an extent, but I've changed some things, but I'm still, I'm just, I'm watching God move. But he was waiting on me to get out of the way, get out of my way. Because <clears throat> I'll end with this. We've erred from the truth of the gospel. And I'm not, I know this isn't necessarily a popular message. I'm not trying to be president or run for office either. Who would want to anyhow? Nowadays, not the climate nowadays. But we've erred, guys. And I'm gonna end with this, okay? When I was a kid, I had a slinky, and they were cool. And you could actually go down the steps with them like that. You know, they worked. Now they're junk. They're made in China, honestly. Well, 25, about 25 years ago, I bought one for my kid. And he tried the step thing, and it kept tangling up because they were cheaply made. They weren't made like they were back 50 years ago when I was a kid. 
Honestly, I'm serious. But hear me out. So, comes to me. He was three. Could barely talk. But talk. Dad, you know, fix it. Okay. So I do the dad thing. To untangle it. It was kind of messed up. And there, there was some string in there. And some of the stuff that he was playing with. And just, you know, untangle it. Untwist it. And give it back to me. Goes to steps. Does the same thing. Comes back again. But, and then he kept watching me. Just like three times. And the third time, I was untangling it he just jerked it out of my hands and took it away like no i can do this that's what we've been doing guys that's the error we've been doing i can do this no you can't no, we can't not without jesus christ being the center of our lives and him being the foundation the chief cornerstone guys it's time for the real deal to really 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 get a hold of him We think we can do it ourselves. We say, oh, my God, I got this, God. And that's the deviation. That's the little error. That's the little fox that spoiled the vine. That's a little leaven leaven. the whole lump. It, it's different for some of us. Some of us, it's the same. Some of it's multiple things. Some of it's single things. Pick one that's in your life. Pick some that's in your life. You know what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. But we choose to ignore it. And then we want to come back to the cross. God, forgive me, God. You know, I repent. I did, you know. This message is for me too, guys. We. I said we. I didn't say you. I said we. So, it's just time to get real, guys, and raw with him. And right with him. I will end with this. That we will, I meant to end with that. I'm very sorry. But this is important too. I'm driving along. Pit, I'm in Dallas, a big city. Everywhere you go, there's a church on just about every corner. At least in the area where I'm at, you know. One block, it's like, man, four, five, six, eight, ten, whatever, you know. And we're all barking, claiming to be a, such a godly Christian nation. And guys, the proof's in the pudding. It's old school, I get it. Look around. No, we're not. Haven't been in a while. We've erred. And deviated. From our first love, from the true, our true source. Some legitimately, the, the enemy has been plaguing us. Some legitimate, legitimately, it's our flesh not wanting to be obedient. And some's God trying to chastise us and redirect us and get us back on course. But we've erred, guys. Well, I'm politicizing anything. It's not about politics, honestly. It kind of is, it mostly isn't, though. It's about good versus evil. It's just evil. People got what they wanted when in this last election. Why? Because they didn't care. They just didn't care. There's the evilness in people's hearts. And we're supposed to be a godly nation. And we're supposed to be, you know, a Christian behind every door, pretty much. <coughs> I don't think so, guys. I'm not the, the preacher that's bashing people. Either. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we've erred. But that's the beauty of the cross and his grace. He's saying, come home. Come home. I will end with this. Look it up. It's about a four-year-old video. It's called Come Home, Precious. I don't want my videos. It's about three or four years old. It's about a dog's redemptive, a redeeming story. But it's really the power of God. He wants it to come home. Come home, Precious. Look at it, and it'll correlate into what I'm saying. We've been that prodigal son, guys, and daughter. We've erred from the faith. Think about the day that you were saved, the time, the minute, the hour, the exact time frame of what really happened. I can, it's still etched in stone. 
in my heart. It's still etched in my heart. I know exactly what happened, guys. The grace that he had bared some pick a reason. Doesn't matter. I sat on this one preacher, he said, an excuse is a reason wrapped up in a lie. You got reasons for it. Usually they're just excuses and they're just <laughs> nonsense. We, again, I'm not saying you. I'm saying we. So guess what? I don't have a mouse in my pocket. It's me included, too. Hurts a little bit, guys. I get it. It's a lot. Cause I didn't think I was erring that much. But it was just enough to get off course. And then once the enemy gets you off course, then it becomes even more and more and more and more. He's, he's relentless. He never lets up. So that little error becomes a huge canyon. Guys, love you. Um, see you soon. Um, just get real with God. And that's the other reason why the, the prayer piece is so important. That's why I put that message out about the 5 a.m. prayer time, the weep and pray between the porch and the altar. 5 a.m. Nobody's around. Nobody's up. Nothing's going on. The day's just starting. You don't have to be on YouTube, cell phone, Facebook, anything if you don't want to. If you don't want, if you don't err or decide to just start turning and blabbing, turning and Facebook has become a man. It's become its own monster, guys. I don't like it anymore. I haven't, I never liked it when I started it, but it's like, man. But I gotta be obedient to the Lord, and it's what He's had me do for right now. Some. I'm praying that I have to keep doing it. But pray, because you don't want to err. You want to be right with God. You want perfect divine direction. That lamp under your feet, a light in your path. Read his word. Pray. Seek God. Ask Jesus. The Holy Ghost can really lead God, direct you to all truths. Really listen. Love you guys. Talk to some.